Hates metacosis perfectionatus or medicine makes perfect sense. Let's continue our biochemistry playlist. In the previous video, we've talked about vitamin B6, pyridoxin. Today, we'll talk about vitamin B7, biotin, baby. With that being said, now let's get started. Let me answer the question of the previous video. What's the name of the disease that has deficiency of the enzyme called sphingomyelinase? It's called Neiman Pick disease, one of the sphingolipidoses. It's also one of the lysosomal storage diseases. If you are a medical student and you actually enjoy studying the lysosomal storage diseases, you're weird. Vitamins are essential, therefore you have to eat them in the diet. Vitamins are cofactor for enzymes. And today's topic, Mr. Biotin is a cofactor for carboxylation reactions because it adds CO2. Biotin is B7, therefore it's water-soluble vitamin, deficiency is more likely, toxicity is less likely, relatively speaking, but luckily, biotin deficiency is really rare. Biotin is the same thing as B7, is the same thing as BIOS, vitamin H, or coenzyme R, or you can call it anti-egg white injury factor, because egg whites actually interfere with B7 bioavailability, because egg whites contain avidin, which avidly binds biotin. We have discussed antivitamins before in this playlist called Biochemistry. Definition, chemical compounds that inhibit absorption of vitamins, such as avidin, protein in a raw egg whites, not egg yolk. Egg yolk is fine. Egg white is a disaster when it comes to biotin. Inhibits the absorption of vitamin B7, which is biotin. It's deactivated by cooking. So when it comes to eggs, turn on the stove, baby. A story from the Egyptian countryside. I've talked about this before in my video about riboflavin. Basically, back in the good old days in the Egyptian villages, especially very poor areas, they used to eat raw eggs with yeast first thing in the morning. They mix them together and drink them before breakfast. What was the reason for that? They have some vitamins, which is true. Vitamin B2, for instance, which is riboflavin. However, when you eat egg white, it has avidin, which will decrease the absorption of vitamin B7, which is biotin. But technically, to be honest, you need to eat lots of raw eggs, like 20 or 30 per day in order to develop vitamin B7 deficiency. The main problem with eating raw eggs is salmonella infection, baby. Why do we need thiamine for dehydrogenase enzymes? Why do we need riboflavin for redox reactions? Niacin is the same thing. Pantothenic acid for CoA. Pyridoxin for transamination and decarboxylation. What is decarboxylation? To remove the CO2. What is B7? Is for carboxylation to actually add a CO2 because vitamin B7 is a carrier and a donor of CO2. B9 to transfer one carbon unit. What are the benefits of biotins? We have direct benefits and indirect benefits. Direct benefits, you can treat vitamin B7 deficiency, which is extremely rare. And you can treat something called multiple carboxylase deficiency. That's a genetic diseases. And it can be treated using biotin, like lots of it. Indirect, cofactor for carboxylation reactions, CO2 fixation, because biotin is a carrier as well as a donor of CO2. Biotin, okay, it has to acquire and to carry CO2 first, and then it can donate it. You have to have some money first before you can donate it. Vitamin B7 is the same thing. It has to carry CO2 first before it can donate. So let, let's make biotin carry CO2. You add HCO3 because HCO3, I, have, I don't know if you have noticed, it contains CO2. So now we have carboxybiotin, which is biotin plus CO2. Now biotin can go everywhere and give the CO2 to many substrates and the enzyme is responsible for that. It's going to be carboxylase. And this is very good for protein synthesis and cell replication, as well as gluconeogenesis, fatty acid synthesis, fatty acid oxidation, etc. What are the sources of biotin? You have vegetables, you have meat, you have yeast, you have egg yolk, but not egg white. And milk is fine. Artificial sources, enriched food, and vitamin B complex supplements that you get in the pharmacy. Functions of vitamin B7, again, carboxylation. Look at this. This is biotin. And when we want to add CO2 to the biotin, it's going to bind to this nitrogen. Let's talk about the enzymes that need biotin as a cofactor. There's an enzyme called pyruvate carboxylase. But in order to understand what is pyruvate carboxylase, let's first talk about pyruvate. Where do we get pyruvate from? From glucose. This is called glycolysis. You eat carbohydrate, they have glucose, glycolysis, 
glucose becomes pyruvate, and then by pyruvate dehydrogenase, it becomes acetyl-CoA. There is another path, there is another option for pyruvate. It's called pyruvate carboxylase. Here is pyruvate, here is oxaloacetate. Okay, the enzyme is a carboxylase, it needs CO2. Whenever you need CO2, you can count on biotin because it comes carrying CO2. Where did it get the CO2 from? From HCO3 and ATP. It also requires manganese. So here is Mr. Pyruvate. By pyruvate dehydrogenase, we can get acetyl-CoA, but by pyruvate carboxylase, we can get oxaloacetate, and this one needs biotin because it's a carboxylase, it's CO2. Let's go back to the TCA cycle. You know, citrate, isocitrate, alpha ketoglutarate, succinyl CoA, succinate, fumarate, malate, oxaloacetate, back to acetyl CoA. This is a carboxylase, it requires biotin because whenever you need CO2, ask biotin because it has CO2. However, pyruvate dehydrogenase needs five cofactors. You remember the Teflon company? T-F-L-N, co, what is the T? Thiamine, what's the F? F-A-D, what's the L? Lipoic acid, what's the N? N-A-D, what's the co? Coenzyme A or co-ash. Let's talk about fatty acid synthesis. It requires three steps, citrate shuttle, acetyl-CoA carboxylase, and fatty acid synthesis. What is fatty acid synthesis? We're trying to build up fat. Let's do it, baby. Okay, TCA cycle has citrate. The citrate, look at the shuttle. It's leaving the mitochondria and going to the cytosol. Look at the shuttle. Beautiful. And then citrate by citrate lays acetyl-CoA. Acetyl-CoA, thanks to an enzyme called acetyl-CoA carboxylase, which needs biotin as a cofactor, will give you malonyl-CoA. Malonyl-CoA plus acetyl-CoA will give you palmitoyl-CoA, which is a fatty acid. Job well done. You have built up fat. The fatty acid synthase complex requires vitamin B5, as we have discussed before, but the acetyl-CoA carboxylase requires vitamin B7. Whenever you see a CoA, you can thank vitamin B5. Whenever you see a carboxylase, you can thank vitamin B7. Building up fat is the job of insulin. Breaking down fat is the function of glucagon. And your lovely pancreas can influence either. Now we have talked about building up fat. Now let's break down the fat. Triglycerides into glycerol and free fatty acid. Glycerol will become whatever, glycerol 6-phosphate, gluconeogenesis. Thank you so much. Now let's metabolize fatty acid to get some energy, baby. Beta oxidation will give you acetyl-CoA, TCA cycle, ATP, and you will get ketone bodies, which can lead to high anion gap metabolic acidosis, and acidosis can interfere with your nerve endings with your synapses and synaptic nerve transmission. That's why many people who are on the keto diet are tired. There are no solutions in life. There are trade-offs. Anyone who rolls up on you and tell you, oh, this diet is the best in the world, nonsense. Anything has pros and cons. We're still breaking down the fat. Fatty oxidation, we need three steps. Activation, quarantine shuttle, and beta oxidation of this even C-chain saturated fatty acid. So fatty acid, fatty acyl-CoA, fatty acyl-CoA will leave the cytoplasm to the mitochondria in a shuttle, and then beta oxidation, acyl-CoA, TCA cycle, and ketone bodies. I'm glucagon, and I approve this message. Now, this was the story of the even chain fatty acids. Now, let's turn our attention to the odd chain fatty acids. There is something odd about the odd chain fatty acids. This is the only example of a fatty acid that can give you glucose, and this will never happen anywhere else. Fatty acids cannot give you glucose, except Mr. Palmitoyl-CoA giving you glucose in, because it's an odd chain fatty acid. So let's start with a fatty acid with five carbons. I don't know where did you go to school, but five is an odd number. Okay, beta oxidation will give you acetyl-CoA and propionyl-CoA by an enzyme called propionyl-CoA carboxylase. Whenever you hear the word carboxylase, you will need CO2 and you can count on biotin. It will give you methylmalonyl-CoA. Methylmalonyl-CoA by an enzyme called the methylmalonyl-CoA mutase will give you succinyl-CoA. And then succinyl-CoA has two paths. It can help you make heme, and this is called the heme synthesis pathway, which we have discussed before in this glorious biochemistry playlist. And succinyl-CoA can enter into the TCA cycle. Succinyl-CoA, succinate, fumarate, malate, oxaloacetate, back to acetyl-CoA. And then acetyl-CoA can become glucose, and this process is called gluconeogenesis. Look at this, here's acetyl-CoA, glucose. From glucose to acetyl-CoA, this is glycolysis. 
but from acetyl-CoA back to glucose, this is gluconeogenesis. I love this word. I just love it. It's awesome. Look at this. Genesis, which is formation. Neo, new, new glucose formation. Yes, indeed, because you have made glucose from fatty acids, and this is new. The old way is to make glucose from carbohydrate, but to make glucose from fatty acid, this is neogenesis, baby. Now let's talk about this enzyme, methylmalonchae mutase. It requires vitamin B12. So if there is a patient who has vitamin B12 deficiency, they will accumulate the methylmalonyl-CoA, but they will have deficiency of the succinyl-CoA. When you have no succinyl-CoA, there is no TCA cycle. No TCA cycle, no energy, no energy in my nerve fibers, I will get demyelination. And that's why patients with vitamin B12 deficiency can suffer from neurological symptoms. Medicine makes so much sense once you understand what the flip you're talking about. So here are the three carboxylase enzymes that require biotin as a cofactor. And here's the heme synthesis pathway, which requires succinyl-CoA. It ends up in protoporphyrin. Protoporphyrin plus iron equals heme. Heme plus globin equals hemoglobin. Let's talk about biotin deficiency. It is rare. Causes primary causes, secondary causes primary. Increased consumption of raw eggs. It has to be lots of eggs, not just one raw egg a day. Now it has to be lots of them, but please don't eat raw eggs because of salmonella infection. There is a risk. Avidin will avidly bind biotin, decreasing its absorption. Malnutrition can cause biotin deficiency, but it's very rare, rare because biotin is widely available in food. Secondary, due to deficiency of biotinidase. Biotinidase, who named these things? What is biotinidase? It's like an enzyme required for release of the protein-bound biotin. So to release the biotin from the protein so that the biotin becomes free and bioavailable. Patients who have deficiency of this enzyme can suffer from biotin deficiency. Also, prolonged use of antibiotics, it has to be really prolonged, like really prolonged. So if you're a doctor and you prescribe antibiotics for a very long period of time, it's a very good idea to add vitamins to the patient's regimen. What's going to happen in biotin deficiency? Decreased function of pyruvate carboxylase, which will lead to decreased gluconeogenesis. Decreased function of propionyl-CoA carboxylase, which will decrease gluconeogenesis. Decreased function of acetyl-CoA carboxylase, which will decrease fatty acid synthesis. Also, when you have no glucose and no energy, dermatitis, alopecia, glossitis, enteritis. Diagnosis, decrease vitamin B7 in blood and urine. Treatment, if the patient has no biotin, give the patient biotin. Some pearls for the pros. Pharmacological doses of vitamin B7 can actually interfere with assays that measure the TSH, and therefore it can mimic Graves' disease. The patient doesn't have Graves, but you are fooled. Why? Because you knew give vitamin B7, they can give you a result that's similar to Graves' disease, even though the patient doesn't have Graves' disease. Question of the day. This is question number six. The previous five questions are in this glorious playlist. What enzyme or enzymes are deficient in cases of multiple carboxylase deficiency? Let me know the answer in the comment section. It will be available in the next video. Don't forget that Roger discovered avidin, which avidly inhibits the absorption of biotin. Let's summarize. Vitamin B7 in an eggshell. Egg yolk, fine. Egg white, icky. Because it has avidin, which avidly binds biotin. Biotin is very important for carboxylation when you want to add CO2. Whenever you need CO2, you can count on biotin. So these are the enzymes pyruvate carboxylase, acetyl-CoA carboxylase, and propionyl-CoA carboxylase. They require biotin as a cofactor. Deficiency of vitamin B7, dermatitis, alopecia, glossitis, enteritis. The treatment, give the patient biotin. Myocardiac Pharmacology now is on sale for a limited time, available at medicosisperfectionalist.com. 50 videos, baby. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell, and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. You can get my Cardiac Pharmacology course here. Thank you so much for watching. As always, be safe, stay happy, and study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalist, where medicine makes perfect sense.